Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 26, where we are covering the third commandment. Remember to keep the Sabbath holy. Sister Lucia writes, God prescribed rest on the seventh day of the week so that it would be a holy day consecrated to the Lord in memory of and in thanksgiving for the week of creation. Sister Lucia talks about how this commandment doesn't just mean no work. I feel like sometimes I struggle with I want to just get ahead for the next week, but it also means to consecrate the day to the Lord. It means that there must be a time of prayer, of preparation for the Mass. Like, we can't just go to the Mass and just show up. Sister Lucia writes, The Church has commanded us to hear an entire Mass on Sundays and Holy Days, and we must not limit ourselves to simply being present at Mass. We must take part in it. So, as a, <laughs> with a young family, we do find it a challenge to participate devoutly in the Mass because of, of the responsibilities that we have with kids. Like I'm often in the back or Janelle's in the back with someone in our arms. But we do our best. But I know that you've had some beautiful experiences prior to marriage that really highlight participation in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Mm -hmm. In 2007, I went to Calcutta and I spent four months with the Missionaries of Charity. Every evening, um, the group of friends that I was with, we would go and spend an hour of adoration with the sisters, the Missionaries of Charity. The busyness of the, the street outside didn't ever distract them. Continuous honking, um, people talking, and the chapel was on the second floor of the mother house. And they would always keep the windows open because it was so hot. There was this one time where there were vehicles going by and all of the sudden, one of the many stray wild dogs got hit by a car. And us in the chapel heard this. So us Canadians are looking at each other being like, whoa, what happened? And of course you hear the dog get run over and then you hear another car hitting the dog and the dog yelping. <laughs> and. We're all just like super distracted by this, but then you look over at the sisters and it's as though there is absolutely nothing that will distract them from their gaze upon their savior. <laughs> so we get distracted so often, don't we, mm -hmm. in a prayer at mass. Um, but this is a beautiful example of, and we've also had a beautiful example recently. For one year, our family would attend the Latin mass. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. And it was a beautiful experience. We decided to go because we knew nothing about the Latin Mass. And we thought, well, it's part of our history of the church. But why don't we attend? So we ended up going to one parish for about a year. And what struck us was the participation of everyone in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass and how reverent, reverent they were. It was beautiful. There was no mistaking who God was yeah. and what the focus of the Mass was. It was a great witness to us, but also to our kids. Because even the young people, and there were so many young people that go to this Mass, they were so reverent. And it was such a beautiful example. Uh, instead, you know, of trying to occupy the kids with things, mm -hmm. with books, with mm -hmm. holy cards, there was none of that. Mm -hmm. And it was like, um, there was no casualness, you know? Mm. No casualness in dress, no casualness in, in who we were looking at. Like everyone had yes. what is called custody of the eyes, where it was like, you're there, you pray, um, you deal with your children, you know, to minimal amounts, and you focus on the mass. You don't look and see, oh, who's here? Who's walked through the door? No or waving. waving. Yeah. No, um, you know, it was if you had to talk to someone, you whisper. It was always there was a um, there was always just a, a level of quietness and prayerfulness within the church proper. And, and the example taught us as adults, but also our kids, God deserves to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. And that we're not going to Mass for a social event. We're going to Mass on Sunday to worship our Lord, our Savior. Mm -hmm. And it was such a beautiful experience for us. Mm -hmm. And there's time to socialize afterwards. That's right. But within the church itself or during the Mass, it's, it's about God. And that's how it should be. Now, we don't attend that parish anymore, right? We have a, a beautiful parish that we attend to where I would have to say, again, the worship is very reverent in the Norvis Ordo that we attend. 
But that experience was just a really rich experience for our family to remind us of the sacredness of the Mass and the importance of Sunday. Sister Lucia writes, The celebration of the Eucharist is not a mere ceremony at which we are present. It is a real event in which we meet the living God. In the person of His Son, the renewal of whose passion, death, and resurrection we celebrate, and we receive His body and blood, as He Himself has told us. We'd like to share with you how we try and keep this commandment in our family. Well, first of all, we go to Mass. Mm -hmm. Um, But we do other things as well. Yes, so... You know, often we like to do things as a family on Sunday. So whether it's inviting another family over for brunch or um, us having a very special brunch um, where we sit down and, you know, just spend time together. It's not rushed. Uh, One thing that we really try hard not to do is get busy with other things that separate the family. So, Mm -hmm. for example, if one child is invited to a birthday party, we might actually say no, we won't be able to attend that birthday party. Or if um, one child is invited to a sporting event, or if there's sporting um, lessons or classes that are on a Sunday, we won't choose to do, do those. So we also keep Sunday as also a family day because it reminds us of the great blessing of God. Mm-hmm. We're not busying ourselves with extracurricular activities. We celebrate the blessing of God with our immediate family and also close friends. And we have chosen also to arrange our schedule during the week where we don't do work on Sunday. So we don't do videos like this. Mm -hmm. We work our butts off during the week so that we can have a breather on Sunday. And that's, there's there's wisdom in this as well. The rhythm of life, we work hard during the week and God knows we need time off. But if you go back a few just half a generation. Do you remember? Everyone used to keep the day holy. People mm-hmm. would rest. There would be no work. At least here in Canada, the shops would be closed. We've lost this sense. Mm-hmm. Sunday has become just another day. This is God's day, and He deserves it. And we need also rest. Mm-hmm. Like There's a reason why God has orchestrated it this way. He wants us to have this day. So let's further examine our hearts so not to offend God. Have I missed Mass on Sundays or Holy Days of Obligation? Have I been late for Mass on Sundays or Holy Days of Obligation or left early through my own fault? Have I made others miss, leave early, or be late for Mass on Sundays or Holy Days of Obligation? Have I been willfully distracted during Mass? Have I done or commanded any unnecessary servile work on Sunday or Holy Days of Obligation? Have I bought or sold things not of necessity on Sunday and Holy Days of Obligation? If we have offended God in any of these ways, let us seek His mercy in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So I'll close with this. When we don't keep Sunday for God, everything gets disordered in the family life. But when we keep God the center, then everything else falls into place. Mm -hmm. This is important, friends. Mm -hmm. When you make God the center of your family, but also give Him Sunday, He'll bless you. Mm -hmm. He really will. So my friends, with that, please pray the rosary with us, Our Lady of Fatima. Pray for us. Special thank you to Clay Ministries, who has sponsored this entire video series. Learn more about them at clayministries.org. And remember to share this video with others. Together, we can do something beautiful for God. God bless, friends. 